Hey everybody, it's Ia Patsy here, and I'm bringing you the general energies today for the sign of Virgo for the coming year 2018. And what I've done is I've created a spread using cards from each of the decks that I've used here on YouTube and the Facebook when I've been doing readings. And I uh, picked two cards from the Inner Child Tarot by Mark and Isha Lerner. In this tarot, they have assigned different energies to different fairy tale characters, okay? And so the energy that was assigned to Virgo was Snow White, the story of Snow White, and Aladdin and the Magic Lamp, okay? And in the regular tarot, um, Virgo is um, assigned to the hermit, right? And um, the magician would be assigned to Mercury, which is Virgo's planet, all right? The Snow White, the number is number nine, and we know any fa. The number nine is death, which is renewal, rebirth, an ending, and a new beginning, right? And Mercury, for the Magician, or Aladdin and the Magic Lamp, is number one. Right, so, I've picked cards from each of the different decks that I've been using, and uh, you'll see how this goes from there, all right? All right, so first of all, Snow White. The story of Snow White. Snow White's mother is the queen. <coughs> Excuse me. She's a beautiful queen. And um, one day she was sewing and she pricked her finger with a needle. As she watches the blood flow from her hand to the snow on the ground, she wishes to give birth to a daughter whose lips are as red as blood, skin is as white as snow, and whose hair is as dark as ebony. And so her wish comes true, but unfortunately she dies during the childbirth. Okay? They name the baby Snow White. A few years later, um, the king gets remarried to another beautiful woman. And she in turn inherits the kingdom shortly thereafter when the king himself passes away. So the orphan princess, known as Snow White, is very mistreated by her stepmother. Okay? Um, she is a wicked and she is a jealous queen. Now the queen is in possession of this magic mirror that keeps her up to date on all the activity that's going on in the kingdom. But the most important thing that she does is every so often she asks the mirror, um, mirror, mirror on the ball, who's the fairest of them all? And the mirror answers her back and assures her that she is, as always and as usual, the most beautiful person in the entire kingdom. Okay. Now, um... Once she years go by, a couple of years go by, and the uh, mirror answers her when she says, "Well, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all?" She's expecting him to answer back as usual, "Well, you are, dear queen," but instead he answers her back, "Snow White." So now she is furious and furious. So she orders a huntsman to take Snow White into the woods and kill her. Now Snow White is only seven years old about this time. Now she also offers, she also orders the huntsman to bring back Snow White's heart as proof that he has carried out those orders. Um, the huntsman takes Snow White into the woods but he can't bear himself to physically kill her. So instead he leaves her in the woods to fend for herself and being as she's such a small child he figures that she'll just you know die on her own and he kills a, a young deer in the woods 
and brings the heart back to the queen who is more than happy and um because now she knows that her status as the most beautiful has been reinstated okay now little snow white finds her way through the forest and she comes upon a home of uh seven dwarfs or gnomes as they were known as at the time this story was written gnomes represent earthly wisdom all right and when she goes inside the house she finds that there are seven chairs seven beds seven bowls and the people who live inside the seven dwarfs who live inside are away working in the diamond mines all right when they return home they find snow white has uh fallen asleep across their beds and they decide to keep snow white and make her become a part of their household now snow white um learns to take care of the the, the gnomes the dwarfs and take tend to their home so they teach her how to cook and how to snow this this represents gaining earthly wisdoms okay over time the queen comes to find out that snow white is indeed still alive and um thanks to the magic mirror aka the snitch um she tries then to kill snow white three more times first she disguises herself as a merchant and she's uh she goes to sell some lace to Snow White to use as a belt around her dress. And she pulls it so tightly around her that it causes Snow White to lose her breath and she passes out. Well, luckily the dwarves come home in time to um, revive Snow White, okay? The second time, the queen disguised herself as a woman selling um, combs and adornments for one's hair. And Snow White buys a comb from her, which results in her scalp and her head becoming poisoned and infected. Now, losing her breath in the first case represents spirit, right? Losing her hair in the second place is about her ego all right the dwarves come home and they're able to uh, revive and restore Snow White again right the last time the Queen comes and she appears as an old woman who is selling apples which she has secretly poisoned Snow White still lacking the ability to discern all right, because you would have thought by now she would have learned her lesson and not buying anything from any street vendors or anybody that comes by her house, right? But still lacking those, um, the wisdom to be able to discern, she takes a bite of the poison apple and immediately falls down dead. <clears throat> the, the dwarfs return home um, to save her, um, but this. A little too late all right so they feel they know that she, she she's dead she appears dead to them actually she's really in a coma but they don't know that so they set about to build a beautiful glass casket and they place her body inside of it and they don't leave her inside of the cottage in the dark they take her out into the forest where the Sun and the sunlight can stream into the casket all right, and this represents the healing powers of the sun and light, okay? The sun is illuminating her heart, her body, and her soul. Her earthly lessons of cleaning and nurturing and humility have been completed, All right? So she's she has already learned all her earthly um, lessons. Along comes a prince, as usual, and he stumbles upon this beautiful young woman laying in this gorgeous casket and decides that he wants to take her back to his castle with him. And he lifts her up in order to carry her to his kingdom, and the movement 
dislodges the uh, apple that has been stuck in her throat. All right, which causes her to awaken. This symbolizes clearing the throat chakra and the empowerment of Snow White with primal wisdom, her ability now to speak up, her ability to roar. This card is symbolic of a call for you to do your own soul work, to work on your own earthly wisdom. Okay? It tells you, it talks about not living in isolation. Okay? And to be um, separated from other people. All right? This is not going to bring you any happiness or contentment. It says that you're being called to active duty in the army of the divine. So you're being challenged to be of service to others and to be a light to the world. You are ready to receive the treasures and wisdoms that are found in your ancestral past. You are being helped by your spiritual helpers and guides and you will find opportunities to brighten the world around you. All right? Now, story of Aladdin and the magic lamp. We know inside of the magic lamp lies or lives a genie. Okay? And genie is um, a word for genius. Okay? So this is talking about the genius within you, Virgo. This talks about using your imagination. And to be mindful of the connection between your words, your actions, and the results. As you create your own reality, through your thoughts and through your words and your deeds, it is recommended that you use positive affirmations to help um, to help bring positive results and rewards. For the things that you're wishing for okay so those are the first two cards that we got um the hermit card we know that the hermit is carrying a light all right and illuminating as he's thinking and as he's looking down and ahead of himself he's watching his steps and he's lighting the world right he's lighting the path as he's watching his steps that represents you, Virgo. Um, now, this, um, the next cards that I used, that I, that I shuffled and got for you, Virgo, were from the Romance Angel Oracle Deck by Doreen Virtue. Okay? And the card that you got is, it is safe for you to love. Open your heart and give and receive the biggest energy of all. All right. So this is saying to me is that in the coming year, 2018, Virgo, that you should know that it is safe for you to love. All right. And that you need to uh, try to have an open heart and an open mind and be ready to receive the love that is coming your way. All right. Very good. All right, the next two cards that you got in the reading were, ooh, oof. okay, excuse me, mm. sorry folks, Oshala, which is Obatala, and the Seven of Water, Seven of Water, again, we get another seven in this reading for you, and we know seven is a number of completion and divine. Right? The divine. A, a bottle and the seven of water. This talks about a bottle talks about strength and purity. All right? Um, this is about peace. This is about happiness. This is about contentment. This is about being a teacher. Okay? A wise teacher. Um, this is also talking about being a religious leader. And divine protector. This is also talking about mental clarity. All right. 
Seven of Water is talking about making a wish. All right. It also talks about don't ask for what you cannot give, don't demand what you cannot share, and don't make promises that you cannot keep. This talks about the inability to, to be able to follow your dreams and being in confusion. All right. This is about your chakras being out of whack but that you are making a wish right and you are trying to have faith Obatala Oshala that represents Obatala which is the highest um, wisdom the Orisha of strength and intelligence genius right Hmm. So, I think it's telling you that the way out of this feeling of being trapped is for you to tie into your spiritual gifts, generosity, openness. And operating through faith, operating through faith to achieve those things that you desire in the coming year, Virgo. I'll say, very good. Okay, um, again, talking about getting your chakra in alignment and in author and in order. I think this is also talking about um, doing breathing exercises, trying to find time to meditate, and to center yourself, all right, do praying, do a lot of praying and meditation, positive affirmations, Just try to wear uh, white as often as possible, especially around your head, and you can always burn a white candle. All right, this whole um, reading, again, is talking about using the protection of your ancestors and the lessons of your ancestral line. So you may want to get some information about, you may start to do some genealogy research so you can find out about the history of your family and of your people um, because that's where your wisdom is going to come from, learning more and more about those who came before you in your family line. All right. Um, but again, don't demand from other people what you aren't able to provide yourself. Okay. Um, learning about balancing the different chakras and about speaking up, speaking your truth, speaking from a, uh, a place of wisdom, trusting your your intelligence, trusting your gifts, not allowing anybody to um, question your intelligence or to try to make a fool of you in this coming year, not allowing anybody to constrain you, keep you tied up, all right? So we need to work on ways of getting our, our self balanced and to be honest and to speak with clarity and intelligence and truth. Having all the facts, doing your research. So before you speak, getting the answers. All right. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I would uh, suggest that you burn a white candle for clarity. And if you have an ancestral altar set up already, that's excellent. Um, but I do think that you would be doing some more, some searching and uh, exploring family history. <sighs> family history, learning the stories of your family. Uh, maybe you might be wanting this coming year to 
do interviews of your family members, the older people, your aunts, your grandparents, your mother, father, and start to compile that information. This might be a project that you might find uh, good to work on. And as you learn more about your family stories and history, uh, you may become, you might find that you're less and less constrained, right? So that's the messages that I'm picking up from Oshala and the Seven of Water. All right. Um, the next card that we were working with this year was the Conscious Spirit Oracle by uh, Ken Dwyer. All right. And the card that came up with, for you, oh, wow, was Find Your Bliss. Oh, beautiful. Find your bliss this year, Virgo. I am following a path I love and I am fully aligned to my soul purpose. Ashe. Okay, so that's brightness and light. Very nice. All right, so let's find out what that card is talking about for you this coming year. I'm going to read from the book, Find Your Bliss. This card is here to remind you that you may only be truly happy when you are doing what you love. Start making small changes in your life to help steer you to a career path that fulfills you and satisfies your passions and talents. Know that the universe will support you in these changes, but you have to start taking the necessary steps. If you are unsure of what your bliss is, Begin to do research into subjects that spark your interest. Connect with others who have similar interests and find courage and inspiration from them. If you're already on a path that you love, perhaps it's time to think of a new direction in which to steer it. Don't become complacent. Continually challenge yourself and your talents and new doors will constantly be opened for you. Ashe, very good. All right, so find your bliss this coming year. That's that's pretty cool, Virgo. Very good. Very good. Okay, so the next card <coughs> that uh, came for you from the Life Purpose Oracle Guidebook, which is, again, by Doreen Virtue. These are cards that talk about um, your life purpose, what job, what vocation um, would you be best suited for okay and the card that you got was <laughs> infinite abundance you are fully supported as you devote yourself to your divine life purpose wow wow Virgo pretty cool right look at that all of that the earth and the fruits and the fullness thereof okay so let's see what infinite abundance is talking about. Whatever it's talking about it looks pretty good to me. <laughs> All right. This card provides, let's see here. All right. Hmm. <laughs> this card provides the reassurance that as you focus upon being of service and following your inner guidance, your needs will be taken care of. The more you can let go of worry and trust in the universe's infinite abundance, the faster your flow of abundance comes to you. Always remember that prayer and positive feelings improve situations. Ashe, while worrying worsens everything. You can give any concerns over to God and the angels for healing. The abundance comes to you in unexpected ways. So don't waste time or energy trying to guess how your needs will be met. Instead, devote your thoughts and actions to following the voice within you. This is your career partner and manager as it's the voice of your answered prayer. All prayers are heard and answered. Listen especially to the response that comes to you in the form of intuition. Hold 
positive visions and feelings of financially of financial security. Hold positive visions and feelings of being financially secure. Affirm that this is your truth right now. See and feel yourself completely supported, and it is so. You will be given specific directions as to how to enact the answers to your prayers. It's essential that you create a quiet time to listen to this inner guidance and then act upon it without delay or hesitation. So again, talking about prayer, meditation, positive affirmations that's going to help you manifest the things that you seek, all right? Not worrying about lack, not worrying about financial distress, not giving energy to what you don't have, but giving affirmations to what you will have, what you expect, and what you desire, okay? So make a vision board of what it is that you you know that you want place it somewhere get some positive affirmations going on and have faith and trust in God that he the creator has given you all the tools that you need to do whatever it is you need to do right that's the message of the magician right Aladdin Magician in the tarot, that you have all the tools that you need to get what you want. And so that is reaffirming this for you for this coming year, Virgo. You have the tools that you need to get everything that you want. And all you have to do is believe it and tap into it and listen to your intuition and the directions that you are going to be given by the Creator, by your divine guides, by your ancestors, in order to get you to where you need to be. I say. Okay, so the next card that we got was from the Native Spirit Oracle by Denise Lynn. And the card, this is our Native uh, Energies, Native American Energies and Indigenous en Energies. And this card that you got was Spirit Keeper of the South. Spirit Keeper of the South. Okay, so let's see what that's talking about. <laughs> Give me a moment here because they got a lot of Spirit Keepers in this book. I, I guess there before, right? North, South, East, and West. We've got Spirit Keeper of the South. Mm. Okay. 86. Okay. <clears throat> Spirit Keeper of the South. This card is talking about abundance and prosperity in all forms. Expansion. Surging energy. Activity. Movement. Rapid growth. Be open to receiving the bounty of the universe. It's a great time to have medical procedures um, and your energy will be at a maximum. The native spirit wants you to know that in the medicine wheel, the south, the south is the direction that symbolizes the warmth of the noonday sun. Now, um, did we talk about Snow White being, her casket being pulled out into the sun? The healing effects of the sun. All right. In the medicine wheel, the south is the direction that symbolizes the warmth of the noonday sun, of summertime, of a full moon, and a time of rapid growth. Crops grow with vigor during the summer months. In the human cycle, it also represents the vitality of childhood. This is your time to shine. It's also a time of great bounty in all areas of your life. Open your arms to receive gifts from the universe. Stand facing the south during the midday. Close your eyes and feel the warmth of the sun opening your heart center. 
absorb the sunlight as you sense yourself absorbing the abundance of the universe. This also says that if this card comes for you and you um, live in the southern hemisphere, read the keep of the north message instead because the meanings would be reversed. Well, let me do that for you because I know that people are watching these videos all over the world, right? So if you're in the southern hemisphere, the card for you would be spirit keeper of the north. All right. Take time for contemplation. Turn within. Connect with your ancestors. Incubate ideas. Mend relationships. Pay attention to your dreams. Meditate. The answers are inside of you waiting to be heard. Again, talking about intuition, right? Stay warm. Create dreams for your future. Repair whatever is broken in your home and in your life. Forgive those people and situations that you've been dragging around for a while. In the medicine wheel, the north is a direction that symbolizes the darkest time of night. The coldest part of winter, the dark of the moon. It also represents the elder time of life and even a time of endings. Pulling the spirit keeper of the north indicates it's time to take measure of your life. Explore what's working and what's not working. What and whom do you need to please? It's also the time to make repairs in your physical environment as well as repairs to your body. Additionally, this is the time to begin to Dream and make plans regarding your future. Your ancestors are closest at this time. Call upon them. They want to help you. Stand outdoors at night facing the north. Inhale the darkness. Sink into your own depths. In the stillness, ancient wisdom emerges. Okay, so spirit of spirit keeper of the south, if you live in the north and spirit keeper of the north if you live in the south okay so again these are the native spirit cards by Denise Lynn all right so those are the energies that uh, came up for you for the coming year 2018 Virgo so I'm going to get some additional guidance for you here from the Until Today cards by Ian Van Zandt. And we're going to see if there are any affirmations that uh, you can take, if there's any confirmations of any of the information that we got in the reading. And uh, we'll see what comes up for you, Virgo. And I want to thank everybody for watching these videos, for sharing, for liking, for subscribing. Um, I really, really, really appreciate the opportunity to come to you and bring these messages to you. I really appreciate that. It's like two cards wanted to come out. Um, thank you so much for allowing me in your life and to be for you becoming part of my life. I really love doing this work and I'm glad that I have the opportunity and the freedom to be able to do that for whoever is available to listen and whoever wants to tune in. I, I just appreciate it. Uh, if you want a personal reading, of course, you can send me an email at pbtarot7 at gmail.com. And uh, please feel free to leave your comments uh, in the uh, area below this video. And I will be more than happy to engage with you. Um, and also... Um, share and like and subscribe. And please share these messages with friends and family members uh, of the Virgos or you can go on the playlist and send it to send the playlist with each and every one of the energy readings for 2018 to any of your friends and family. All right. Uh, okay. It says first card you got here is I share my load with God. Wow. I share my load with God. Until today, you may have been feeling overwhelmed by trying to do everything on your own. Just for today, ask God to help you ease 
some of your burdens. Ask God to help you ease some of your burdens, Virgo. Oh, shame. Very nice. I accept and acknowledge the truth. Until today, you may have engaged in self-destructive behavior to avoid acknowledging the truth. You are a chosen one. Just for today, activate the truth in your consciousness. Accept the fact that you are important. Very good. I share my load with God and I accept and acknowledge the truth. Know who you are, Virgo, and stand up for who you are. Speak your truth. And don't let anyone diminish you. Don't let anyone diminish you. Stand up for what you believe in and acknowledge and accept the truth. Even the truth that is unpleasant. Acknowledge it and accept it. You don't have to like it. <laughs> But those things that are too heavy, share them with God. Okay, so the final card that we're going to be, um, the final deck that we're going to be consulting is the Postcards from Spirit deck. And this is a new set of cards on the market and they're by Colette Baron reed and what these are are individual postcards. Are these the cards? All right, shaped like postcards, about the thickness of a postcard. And these are individual messages from Spirit. And they're going to answer your inquiries and questions. Okay, so the way it works is that you ask a question of a particular ancestor and they will answer you back. But when they answer you, they're going to answer you in the collective rather than singularly. So if you have um, a question for Aunt Jerry, you're going to get a, an answer back from all of your ancestors. They're going to answer you in the collective, even though you're asking for a particular um, ancestor to respond. So don't feel like he or she isn't responding. It's just that it over there, I guess they all like counsel and you know conference and decide what the answer is going to be and send it back to you as a group. So they answer you in the collective, but they address you as you, dear you or to you. Okay, and you got two cards, Virgo. So let's see. The first one is oh. You are divine bounty. Oh, very nice. You are divine bounty. Okay, dearest you, <clears throat> we have a secret to share with you. If you act as if all is well, it will be. Act as if you are brave and you will have courage. Act as if you are love and you will be a magnet for love and experience the love of spirit. Act as if your prayers have been answered, as if you are truly in sync with good fortune. How you think is how you will see the world. How you will interact with it and draw conclusions from it. If you want to be the person who has the life you want, co-creating and loving what is yours, you need to start acting as if that were truth. Don't worry about the conditions in your life that seem empty or cavernous, chaotic or barren. These are temporary and don't even count. Defy them and act as if you are the luckiest person on the planet. You will be, for you already are. That's the real secret. You are infinite 
potential. Loving you so much, rainbows explode in the ether. Okay, so that's your postcard from Spirit. That's one of them. You got two. All right, so that's good. It says acknowledging and accepting the truth. And that was reiterated in this message for you, Virgo. Excellent. Very, very nice. The next card that you got here was, see, <laughs> yeah, these words are really small. This, this writing is very ethereal. Uh-huh. Oh, hidden treasures. That's why I needed the magnifying glass. Because <laughs> the treasures are hidden from my old eyes, right? Okay, so here you go. Hidden treasures. Hidden treasures. Oh, that's nice. And the front of the card it has a little stamp in the corner. Heaven is putting in this two cents, two cents from heaven. All right, dearest you, since you're on earth, you understand how buildings are built, yes? A good, solid foundation, and yet flex flexibility, too, in case of earthquakes. Truth be told, you can't offer something sustain sustainable unless it is built from a solid base, whether it be an idea that takes form one step at a time or an actual house that needs a sturdy foundation dug, poured, and built. We want to remind you of this because you might need a little encouragement to see that this is true in your life at this time. Celebrate the fact that right now you can repair the cracks in the foundation of your life effortlessly, as well as do a general sight check to ensure your hard work is being well supported. Do this and know that you are building your life on a perfect and solid foundation that will allow you to welcome the many miracles waiting to come visit. We are so happy for you and so intrigued by what you're building. Oh, shame. So you have a work in progress and your ancestors are there, and your spirit guides are there to help you and encourage you. Okay? They are so intrigued by what you're building. Ashe, very nice. Very, very nice. Okay, so Virgo, it looks like you're having a very positive reading for the coming year 2018. And as I said, we're gonna you're gonna find some positive um, affirmations and you're going to uh, make a vision board for yourself for this coming year. Um, or at least that's the advice that I would be giving to you is that you need to do that. Um, do some digging into your family history. Okay. Go get some work done. Um, you might need to have a maybe an adjustment to your back, chiropractic adjustment to your back. Um, you may need to go get a, a massage or a, a few massages, you know, um, to loosen up some of those chakras and getting them aligned all right look into um how those chakra align alignments work and uh you might want to look into that but definitely work on looking into your family history all right and following and finding your bliss. Your bliss is coming this year. Okay, Virgo. So I'm so happy for you. And I uh, hope you are looking forward to 2018. Because I certainly am. So thanks again so much for um, watching, subscribing, and sharing these videos. Please make sure you like this video. And share it with your family and friends. And I'll be talking to you soon. I'll hopefully be doing uh, the Love Bites next week and week after i also have a couple of new decks that i'd like to break out um that i've asked santa for so hopefully he'll be bringing them to me and uh we'll be able to open them up uh on air 
and uh, look into what's what what other goodies we may have before the end of the year. So enjoy your Christmas, enjoy your Kwanzaa, enjoy Hanukkah, and enjoy the new year. All right. And I am looking forward to speaking with you again in January. And as usual, Alafia, Ashe, and.